Expressing possession in Southern Quechua, nominal agreement and basic possessive construction with can, there is, there are. In this presentation, we're going to talk about how to uh, how Southern Quechua speakers talk about possession. They express possession. So even though possession is a fairly complex topic, we're going to restrict ourselves to the most basic and general uses or forms or constructions that express things like I have a pencil, I have a pen, the pen my pen is black, what about yours? Things like those. Let's take a look at that. Let's start by taking a quick view at how English expresses possessive constructions. So in that way, we can understand better the things or the constructions and the meanings that they have in Quechua. We're going to start with the idea, or we're going to start by pointing that there is a verb that expresses possession in English and also in Spanish, the verb to have, tener in Spanish. So in this, for example, I have a dog. We can see that the dog belongs to somebody, in this case, the person who is speaking, I. By that token, we can see or we can propose or we can imagine and say that my dog is small also shares of the same way of talking about possession. In this case, it, they, the first person, I have a dog, and the second one, my dog is small, they share the same reference point that serves as a possessor, the first person, I. That's the reason why they are, this example says my dog is small, the dog that belongs to the one who's speaking. So this example or these uh, sentences can be fairly straightforwardly represented with this graphic. You have a person who is a speaker, you have a dog, which is, which is a small dog, and you get that it belongs to this, to the, it's an element, it's a belonging of this person. But if we focus now on the dog, it's a third person. So we can say something like her name is Koricha or my dog's name is Koricha. And what we're doing is taking the dog as the reference point and saying that there is a name and that they, uh, that name belongs or has a, is in some possessive relationship with the dog. Interestingly enough here, notice that my dog's name is Horicha. So I am combining two levels of possession. One that is based on the dog itself, my dog's name, the name of the dog, and then my dog, the name of the dog that belongs to me. So I'm only saying this to, uh, to call your attention to the fact that we are going to be able to combine different levels of possession. And this can also be done in Quechua. Moving forward to a second person, second person reference point, a second person possessor, we can say something like yours is Yanacha. And in this way, we're saying, we're t we're saying something about the dog that you own, your dog, yours. This is a possessive pronoun. So you have a second person, which, which is the reference point, the owner, the possessor, and we have Yanacha, Blackie, the dog, and we can say that Yanacha owns a name. Yanacha is his name. And also that this dog called Yanacha belongs to you, the listener. So yours is Yanacha if I want to synthesize everything into a pronoun that talks about the thing of yours, yours, yours is Yanacha. To sum up, what we've been talking about is how possession can be expressed in English. And the first way is to use a verb, to have. The second way is to have a construction that connects the possessed thing with the possessor or its owner. The first way to do that is by using a possessive modifier for the noun. This possessive modifier, a possessive adjective, adjective or a possessive demonstrative, is here, my, her, my. Another way to do this is using a possessive pronoun, like yours, which is a word that presents an entity as someone's entity. So it's a fairly, uh, it's a more general way in which we talk about something that belongs to somebody. The last way in which we can express possession in English, or the last general way in which we express this in English, is through something called the genitive marker. And in that case is dog's name. So the suffix, the apostrophe and the S, is telling you whose something is. It's telling you that the name belongs to the dog. It tells you that the dog is the owner of the name. 
All of those ways of expressing possess possession can be used also in Southern Quechua with differences that are important to understand and to, to examine. The use of possessive suffixes in Southern Quechua is something very important that is uh, part of different constructions in, in Southern Quechua grammar. So it is very important that you understand how to combine these suffixes with other nouns and its most fundamental value, in this case, to express possession of something. So just for comparison's sakes, we are going to take a look at also the verbal agreement, because the idea here is that the way in which you can relate a noun to a verb, saying that this is the subject and this is the, the event that is happening, so you have a first person, a second person, is very similar to what happens when you talk about my pencil, your pencil, his pencil. So for verbs, we have that the verb miku, to eat mikui, that's infinitive, but I'm using just the stem, just the base. Miku, to eat. We have that that verb miku can be conjugated. And noka, noka miku ni tells us that I eat. So ni is the marker for first person verbal agreement in technical terms. Kang mikunki pai miku nokaiku mikuiku or Nyokaiku mikuniku in Ayacucho in the Chanka region. Nokanchis mikunchis. Kankuna mikunkichis. And paikuna mikunku. So these are the endings, the verbal agreement mark markers for, for verbs. On the other hand, we have that when you want to talk about something that belongs to somebody, when you want to use a, when you want to say, oh, this is my dog or this is my whatever, in Quechua you have to you use fairly similar a fairly similar way of marker of marking. So alcoi means my dog. Alcoiki means your dog. Alcon means his or her dog. Alcoiku our dog, not yours. So that means that the listener, the hearer, the addressee is excluded. Al conchis, our dog, but also yours, which means that the listener is included. Al coikichis, your dog, plural, the dog of yours, of you guys's. Al conku, their dog. So what we're looking at here you can see is that there are some parallels here. So you have that N, Enchis, and Enku are shared forms from the verbal paradigm, how you conjugate the verb, the verb, and what we should call the nominal paradigm, because what we're looking at here is not just possessive, a possessive marker, is a complex nominal agreement. And I'm saying this because we will see how these so-called possessive suffixes are used for many other constructions. Constructions, For instance, to talk about uh, uh, subordination, to, to do subordinate clauses, we're going to see that too. But that is, that is a more advanced topic. It is also possible to make explicit the relationship between the owner and the thing possessed by explicitly mentioning who this thing is. So for that, we need to use the pronouns that, that indicate the, the, the reference point, the possessor. So in Southern Quechua, we can have that in the following way. Nyokaj alkoi, dog of mine. And what you're looking at here, this P is the genitive marker in Quechua is the way in which Quechua speakers, Southern Quechua speakers, say that my dog or this dog belongs to me. Interestingly enough, and this has to be stressed, this is clearly a case of agreement because what you have here is a first person, Nyoka, and then you have here also a first person, my dog. 
So what literally is happening in Southern Quechua is something like my dog of mine. They are saying something like my dog of mine. And that is the way in which you do that. But of course, to express to express nyokach in that way, you know, explicitly, only happens if you must uh, if you must emphasize that this is the dog of mine and not the one of yours. And you're making things a little bit more. You are uh, trying to be clearer or, or making expressing the possession in a more in a more forceful way. So all the other pronouns, all the other persons, need to have this type of agreement with the uh, the possessed noun. And we have kam, kampa, kampa al koiki, dog of yours, paipa al hong, dog of his, dog of hers, nokaiko al koiku, dog of ours, not yours, Nokanchispa al conchis, dog of ours. Kankunach al koikichis, dog of yours, in plural, dog of you guys. Paikunach al konku, dog of theirs. So what we see here is that the form, the nouns that are marked with the possessive form, the possessive suffix, my dog al koi, your dog, al koiki, they have to relate or they have to express very clearly that relationship with the possessor, the reference point, with the pronoun, and also the genitive. So this is a combination that you need to use or you need to keep in mind when you are talking about whose thing is this. Nokach al koi, my dog of mine. And that is the way in which this happens in Southern Quechua. So now we can see how a, a, a very basic question such as Imatak Sutiki, what's your name, can be answered with this possessive construction, the basic possessive construction in Quechua that relates an owner as the reference point, the person who owns something, and the thing that is possessed, the name. Nokach of mine, Nokach Sutika Karlosmi. Pretty much, my name is Carlos. In Quechua, it's something like, of mine, my name, Carlos. And then you have to remember, of course, that this form, ka, appears as the topic, the thing that we're talking about. The question is about your name. So we're talking about the name, and the new information is my name, Carlos, which is going to be marked with me. So this makes up for this whole construction that in Mataksutiki, the most complete way in which you can reply to that is Nokah Sutika Carlos Mi, Noka Sutika, your name plus me, or M if it ends with a vowel. So Nokah Suti, my name, Kampa Sutiki, your name of yours, Paipa Sutin, his her name. Notice how I'm putting between parentheses Nokah, Kampa, Paipa because those are optional. We only express those if we want to make it very clear that it is my name that I'm talking about, not yours, or it's his name, not theirs name that we're talking about. For contrastive purposes, we would use overly express, uh, we would overly express the pronoun with the genitive. No, kaj, kampa, pai, pa. No canchispa sutinchis, our name, no kaiko sutiku, our name but not yours. Kankuna sutikichis, you guys' name, then your name of yours. Paikuna sutinku, the name of theirs, their name. Notice how in this case the pronunciation for Q for sorry for P in the end at the end of a syllable or at the end of a word is always ha, a deep ha sound in Cusco and Bolivia. So ñocap, the way it's written, it's actually ñocaj or ñocaj, how they pronounce that in Cusco. And that's the way I tend to pronounce it too. Nokaiku, kankunaj, paikunaj. But if it ends with a consonant, then the suffix is pa, 
So the possessor is mentioned with this suffix pi or pa, the genitive suffix. And the uh, possessed entity, as we've been mentioning, needs to take a personal marker that agrees with the pronoun of the possessor. So when the, going back to the, the distinction between P and Pa, very clearly, it seems that Quech, Southern Quechua does this quite often. If a word ends with a consonant, then you get Pa, but if it ends with a vowel, then you get P pronounced Ha in Cusco and Bolivia. Another important element here for the genitive form, the genitive suffix P or PA, is the dialectal variation that we're going to find. So if you are learning from speaker who tends to use or prefers the Chanka variety, things are in some way getting easier because there is only one suffix, PA. They use the same for Ending with a ending with a vowel, ending with a consonant. So nyokach for a chanka speaker is going to be nyokapa. And then kampa is gonna be kampa. So no difference. Paipa, nyokanchispa, nyokaikupa, etc. etc. However, things get a little bit more complex when when the speaker is from Bolivia, particularly from Cochabamba, but everywhere in Bolivia, there is wide variation between there is viral, there is wide variation regarding the way in which the genitive is pronounced. So some people use pata for everything. So you can say no capata, campata, paipata, no canchis, no canchapata, etc. Some others are going to alternate between pata and echta, PTA. So if it ends with a vowel, they're gonna say nyokachta, but kan pata. And still some others are going to use echpata, P-P-A-T-A. So nyokachpata, and then kan pata. So as you can see, there is some variation here in the Bolivian uh, the Bolivian variety of Southern Quechua, but in the writing system, we are going to prefer to distinguish between P and PA, just to simplify and to unify this variation in writing. Let's take a look now at some combinations that use this genitive P, PA suffix and the possessive suffixes, the nominal agreement suffixes. So, Let's see some examples then. Maria Michin Sumachmi. Maria Michin Sumachmi. So for that sentence, we can see that Maria, Maria, Maria Michin Sumachmi, Maria. Let us now take a look at some examples combining the genitive P, PA, and the uh, possessive suffixes, the nominal agreement suffixes in Southern Quechua. So if I say, if I say something like Maria Michin Sumachmi, then what I'm talking about is Maria is the owner and there is a cat that belongs to Maria and that cat is pretty. So Maria Michin Sumachmi, Maria's cat is pretty. And this is the way we're going to analyze this. You can see how the agreement exists or the agreement has to be uh, expressed. Maria Michin. Then Sumach Michin Pasutin Lilim. Sumag Michimpa Sutin Lilim. So in this case, her her cat's name, her cat's name is Lily. Or in more precisely, Sumag Michin Pasutin, her pretty cat's name is Lily. You can see again how we have that the cat's name is Lily. Michipa or Michich in that case, Michich Sutin, that would have been simply the cat's name, but it's her cat's name. So Michin Pa, and now we have to get it that way Michin, her cat, Michin, her cats, Michin Pa Sutin Lilim. Maria Michin Pa Sutin Lilim. Maria Michin Pa Sutin Lili. Another thing you can get, you know, what we're getting at now. 
So, Maria Michin Pasutin Lili is Maria's cat's name is Lili. So, in Maria Michin Pasutin Lili, Lilim, what we have is what I was mentioning before. We can combine different levels of possession. And what you have here is that the cat has a name. So, the cat's name is Lilim. So, her name of the cat is Lily, but the cat belongs to Maria. So Maria's cat's name is Lily. So in English it makes perfect sense because pretty much it's the same type of construction, Maria's cat's name. What is different, and it's very important to notice the difference, is that in Quechua you must mark a possessive suffix in agreement with the person of the owner. So, to make things a little bit clearer here, what we have here is that the cat owns a name. Okay, the cat's name, its name of the cat. The cat is a third person and it agrees with this, but then, you know, the cat owns the name, so it's marked with the genitive here. So the same can be said about Maria and it and her relationship with the cat. So then Maria has a cat, so it's her cat, is the cat of Maria. This is the agreement. It's the same possessive marker as the person who is the owner. And we know that this person is the owner because we mark it with the gen because we mark it with the genitive. So what if we want to ask a question? Whose cat is this or something similar? Well, in that case we have Pipatah Lili, Pipatah Lili, who's is Lili, or who, who Lili belong, to whom Lili belongs, Lili Mariap Mariachmi, Lili Mariachmi, so Pipatah Lili, P plus Pa means who's, but in Cusco and Bolivia, of all places, <laughs> we're going to have to learn another form that is pichta. Pichta is pipta, pipata. Okay, so that is by and large the way in which they ask this type of question in Bolivia and Cusco. Who, who's, sorry, is pichta, pipata, pipta, pichta. So how would you say something like your friend's cat's name is Lily? Take a second. Kampa, Kampa Masikir, Masi friend, Kampa Masikir, Michinpa, Suting Lilim. And you can see how we are adding yet another level of possession. So now is your friend's, the cat's name is Lily. Your friend's cat's name is Lily. And uh, finally, it is the friend of yours, Kampa. Kampa Masikir, Michinpa, Suting Lilim. So we can ask this question. Imatah kampa, imatah kampa masikeh sutin. Imatah kampa masikeh sutin. What am I asking here? Imatah kampa masikeh sutin. What is the name of your friend? What is the name of your friend? What of yours, your friend's name? Their name, its name, his name, her name is literally. Imatah kampa masikeh sutin. So, from what we've been talking about, the name of your friend, nokah, nokah masipa, nokah masipa sutenka mariam. Nokah masipa sutenka mariam. Of mine, my friend of mine, my friend of mine's name. Her name is Maria. So it looks complex, but in the end, the only thing that we're adding is the possessive marker, the nominal agreement suffix, whenever we're using a possessive relationship. So the finally, how do how does one says to have in Southern Quechua? Imaninatah to have or in Quechua Simipi. Well, uh, there is not a verb that means to have in Southern Quechua. 
most Quechua, most Quechua languages, most Quechua languages lack a verb that means to have. And they, exception, the, one of the exceptions is Ecuadorian Quechua. They do have a verb that means to have, and it, it's been derived from the verb that means to grab or to, to hold, if I remember well. So what we need to do for Southern Quechua is a circumlocution, another way, a construction that tells us that somebody has something. So literally, what we're going to say is the equivalent to someone's something exists. That's what we're saying in Quechua. And it's the easiest way to say, I have something, you have something, he has something. So if I want to say that, uh, that Jose has a book, I say something like, Jose, Jose, Librum, Kangmi. Jose Librum Kangmi. Literally, there is Jose's book or Jose's book exists. So that is how you say that in Quechua. So we can take a look now at the, the full paradigm, if you, if, you, if you want, of to have in Quechua. There is no such verb. There is a construction that combines the verb exist, can, which won't change, as you can see. There is, there is, there is, there is. And what is going to change is the thing that exists because it's in a relationship of possession with the owner. And the owner is, in this case, the first person and it's going to be marked with the genitive too. No kah libru y kan. The book of mine, my book of mine exists. There is my book. I have a book. Kampa libru y kikan. Your book of yours exists. You have a book. There is your book. Pai pa libru un kan. No kai kuh libru y kukan. No kan chis pa libru un chis kan. We, and also you, have a book. It is in, that is the inclusive form. Kan kunah libru y kichis kan. The book of yours exists. You guys, plural, you have a book. Pai kunah libru un kukan. The book of theirs exists. You have, uh, they have a book. So we can practice this by taking a look at this bedroom and asking, "Imai kita, imai kita, punyuna wasikipi kan? What do you have in your bedroom? Literally, what things of yours? Imaiki, imaiki. Take a look. I mentioned before that the nominal agreement, the possessive suffixes, are used very, very often in Quechua. Here you have a good example. Ima, the word for what, can take a possessive suffix in Quechua. Imaiki, literally, what of yours, what things of yours. So, imaikitah punyuna wasikipikan, what things of yours are there in your bedroom? Literally, that's what it literally says, but it means, what do you have in your bedroom? So, punyuna, punyuna ikang mi. I have a bed, punyuna ikang mi. And we can continue with other things in the bedroom. Anchana, light. Anchana ikang mi, there is my light. Kawarina, window. Kawarina ikang mi, there is my window. I have a window. Hampara, table. Hampara ikang mi, I have a table. Computadora. Computadorai kang mi. I have a, uh, I have a computer. Tiana sit. Tiana i kang mi. I have a sit. I have a chair. So, we could also ask yes no questions. Fairly simple. We know how to form those. So punyunai ki kang chu. Is there your bed? Do you have a bed? Ari punyunai kang mi. Yes, I have a bed. Punyunai kan mi. Kampa computadora ikichu kan. Do you, a computer, do you have a computer? Is it a computer that you have? Notice how, again, I'm putting chu here in a different word, which means that I'm focusing, I'm focusing that word. So, kampa computadora ikichu kan. Is there your computer of yours? Do you have a computer? Ari, ari, nyoka computadora mi kan. Kampa computadora y kichukan. Ari, nyokas computadora y mi kan. Yes, my computer exists. 
yes, I have a computer. And since the question two is on computadorai key, then computadorai me is the answer to that. As I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, possession is a fairly complex topic, and we've only mentioned the most general way, the most general ways in which this is expressed in Southern Quechua. There are still other forms of possession that I just want to mention in passing so that you get an idea or that you see that, well, there is still more ahead. So with can, with the verb there is, there are, you can use another construction that makes the possession a little bit more uh, stronger. The relationship between the owner and the thing that they own is, uh, how would I put this, is is more um, is more emphatic or there is something that uh, in the thing relates more uh, relates strongly with the owner so you can say something like al con capun that means he has a dog so we can also say al con can that is his dog he has a dog so the difference is simply that in this case the dog exists for him which makes more sense as if you have a dog and the sense that you are you you own a dog in some way okay but we're taking the perspective of the dog the dog belongs to you that is uh, a better way in which this may be uh, understood so there is even another way in which we can talk about this particularly in Bolivia where the verb instead of can is tiay to sit but they use the form in the third person, tiyan, to sit, that, me, that is, to be there, and also with pu. So, michi tia puan, misi tia puan, they would say in Bolivia, misi instead of michi, that's a variation, misi tia puan, that means I have a cat, a cat belongs to me, or a cat is there for me, my cat exists for me. So, even a stronger sense of belonging is conveyed with the form yoh and with the verb to be. So you can say something like pai al koyohmi, he owns a dog. Well, we don't have the verb to be because this is a third person and this is like saying he is a dog owner, pai al koyohmi. So we don't have to express the verb to be, but we use the form mi to indicate that this is an assertion. He owns a dog, I know. So if I want to say that I own a dog, or sorry, that I own a cat in this case, noka michiyoh misiyoh kanim, I own a cat. Literally, I am a cat owner. So these constructions, these constructions express something stronger in the relationship between the thing and the owner. So, uh, but we will need to study this in more detail in more detail later. I hope that you have taken a quick look at this relationship between the possessive uh, suffix and the pronoun that talks about the owner or the reference point, the possessor. This is going to be a correlation, a, an agreement relation that is going to be present in many, many constructions in Quechua. Thank you very much.